Hi, and welcome to Chapter 2 of Get Going Training with Excel. We're going to be working off of our expense sheet that we created in Chapter 1. You can find it on our website if you don't have it already by going to the download link provided in this DVD. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Excel document by going up to the Office button, clicking it, and going to Open. I'm going to navigate to Get Going Training 1, Monthly Expense, and hit Open. And you notice we're right where we left off. Now, I'm going to go over formatting of the cells. We touched a little bit about that with the currency in the previous chapter, but let's go in a little bit deeper. Now I'm going to click on a cell. I'm going to right click on a cell and go to format cells. Now we just went over the numbers function, but let's go over the alignment and the other features. Here in the, in the alignment tab, you'll see that I can control where the text you know, it is displayed in the cell. So if we stretch the cell and make it bigger, you know, we can control where that text lines up in the horizontal and vertical columns. We can also wrap the text in the cell and say we're writing a few sentences and we don't want it to spill over. Actually, let me show you that right now before it gets a little bit confusing. Let's say I'm writing a long sentence. You notice how it spills over into two cells even though it's still in the cell E4. If I was to take that, if I was to take that and stretch out the columns, you notice how it's still spilling over. So let me go back to cell formatting. Go to right click, go to format cells. And then I'm gonna align it in the center and the horizontal and the vertical center as well, and hit OK. And you'll see how it updates. So look at the text has moved right to the center. Now I want to wrap the text so it doesn't overlay. Right click again, go to Format Cells, and hit Wrap Text. Now you notice how Excel automatically determines the, you know, the, the, the sentence break so it doesn't overlap any words, so you know, it looks nice and clean. Now if you notice that our chart is kind of messed up since I've dragged this. An easy way, instead of, you know, clicking in between the cells and kind of moving it to, all right, that looks about right. Now, there's a little easy with this, so we don't need it anymore. Quick and easy way to automatically format the cells is just double click in between either a cell or, a, or either a row or a column, you know, so you get your in between icon, the up and down arrows or the left and right arrows if you're in columns. Just make sure you have that icon, double click. So Excel will automatically format it just like the cells around adjacent to it. I can do that the same with columns. Let me stretch the column out. I'm going to double click it and bam. It automatically pulls it so all the text is displayed in its entirety and that none of the text wraps over. Oh, here's another feature. If you ever see that, if you ever see a bunch of pound signs, this means that there's numbers displayed in the cell, but the numbers are larger than the cell can display. So you notice if I hover over it, it shows me the cell contents, but for some reason, Excel doesn't show me the, the numbers. Unlike the word wrap feature with numbers, Excel doesn't bleed over the numbers into adjacent cells. It'll display pound signs so you don't get confused. If you ever see this in one of your sheets, just drag the column or automatically format it by double clicking it, and you notice that the numbers reappear. That's an important tip, and it's kind of stumbled me in the beginning before I kind of you know, understand what that those those pound signs were, and I was, there's no other way to get rid of it. So none of those automatically formatted our columns. Let's go into showing how you can drag cells. So let's say I want to move water above Jim. I'm going to select all the cells pertaining to water by clicking either the dollar sign, you know, either the by clicking either the monetary amount or the name, holding down the, the left mouse button, or if you're Mac, just holding down your mouse button and dragging over to the two cells. Now you notice that both the cells are selected. If I select the border with the crosshair, hold it down, I can drag it up. Now Microsoft will ask when I'm dragging cells if I want to replace the contents of the destination. If you hit OK, when I drag it up, it'll just override it. This will work sometimes, but uh, let's say I didn't want to override the cells where I'm dragging. I'm going to hit Undo, or a shortcut key is Control Z. I'm going to right click on the cells and go to Cut. And then I'm going to go up to Jim, right click and go to Insert Cut Cells. Now, if you notice, Microsoft inserted the cells above where I clicked. 
Let me show you that one more time. Let's say I want to move electricity down above the cell phone column. So I'm going to select electricity and the expense. Hit to cut. It's going to insert it above the cells. That's a, uh, that's a universal rule in Excel. So let me insert cut cells. And then boom, electricity is moved above where I wanted it to be. So just remember when you're cutting or moving, you either are going to be replacing the contents of cells or if you're going to cut and paste, remember to select the cells below where you want them inserted. All right, so another thing we're gonna go over is adding multiple sheets. If you look down here, you notice that I'm on sheet one. Now, what does that mean? This entire thing that we see is a sheet, what Microsoft Excel considers a sheet. A sheet is just a series of columns and rows of data that you've entered. So by default, Microsoft, whenever you're opening up a new workbook, gives you three sheets to work from. You don't necessarily need these three sheets, but if you're doing multiple sets of data, you know, let's say you're comparing uh, multiple months, which I'll show you a little bit later, or uh, various you know, other data points, you might want to se separate it into different sheets instead of different columns or rows just to make it cleaner. So if I want to change the sheets, all I do is go down here and just click on the sheet, and you notice that it's just like paging through a book. So things I can do with the sheets down here, I can, if I right click on it, I can rename them. I'm gonna make this July expense. You can also change the tab color, which I like to do just to make a little, uh, stand out a little bit more by again, right clicking on the sheet, go to tab color, and I'm gonna make this one red. So that stands out real nice. So let me make this one August expense, because let me show you how to do August expenses or an easy way to transfer over August expenses. I'm gonna right click on sheet two, go to rename, and hit this August expense. And then I'm gonna make that tab color by right clicking on the sheet, go to tab color and make that blue. So again, instead of retyping all that stuff, I'm just gonna select all my cells, right click, go to copy. Now you notice that the cells are selected. Go over to August, up to A1, right click, go to paste. And it's pasted all the all the formulas, all my my numbers, everything right over, all my formatting as well. But instead of July, I'm gonna make this August. So I just showed you an easy way to make two different sheets so you can sort two different sets of data. Let's say you didn't want to make the expenses on multiple sheets and you wanted to do multiple columns. One way of doing that would be to type, you know, click on the adjacent cell, type August, and click on the adjacent cell as well and type. You know, just go throughout and just type all the months, but that takes a lot of time. Easy way of doing that, like I kind of pointed on earlier, is to select July, go to the bottom right-hand corner, hold it down, and just drag it right. And Excel automatically fills in the formatting for you, and then months, in the same border, the same font. It's really easy, it's, it's, it's quite incredible when you're doing a lot of data. This saves you a ton of time. Another thing you can drag is, let's say numbers. I have one, two, I wanna drag this right. Select these, drag it right. Now you notice how I selected cells one and two before I dragged right. By doing that, I'm telling Excel that I'm counting upwards. Now see, the automatic fill function works a bit differently with numbers than words, like, you know, months. Numbers, if let's say I was to drag a single cell, like one, and I drag that over. Excel just copies one. This might be something you need, but um, if I wanna be counting, I kinda have to give Excel a little bit more data before I drag cells with numbers in them. Let's say I wanted to do nine, eight, and I wanted to count downward. I'm gonna select cells nine and eight, and then drag it over. And you notice how it counts downwards instead of upwards, like I did up here. Let me try two, four, and see if it does even numbers. And look at that. It does even numbers. And again, if I do 18 and 16 and select those, it'll count downwards even numbers. So you can see how I have to input a little bit more data in maybe two or three cells. But once you get a hang of it, this will save you a ton of time. Trust me.